Part two walks you through the one keystone habit that's going to make the biggest difference and provides the tools to help you use that keystone habit. The most powerful keystone habit is to be helpful. So a few years ago, I saw firsthand how a well-run hospital emergency room can save someone's life. Of all the wonderful things I saw that day, the senior nurse's actions were the ones that left the greatest impression. And so the other nurses turned to him with their questions. The doctor asked him for updates, and we listened to him when he explained what was happening and what they were planning to do next. But he wasn't just the, the patient hospital liaison. He also had his own list of responsibilities and medical duties to carry out. So it was clear that the senior nurse was the go-to person in the room and a critical part of the success of the treatment. In short, he was helpful. And so like the senior nurse in the emergency room, as a project manager, team leader, executive, or subject matter expert, all eyes are on you to deliver. And so the expectation is you know what you're doing, you understand the specific type of help that people need, and how to provide it. And so people see you as helpful because your actions enable them to achieve what they need to do. And when others succeed, you succeed. Why being helpful is such a powerful keystone habit. There are lots of good habits that improve specific areas of our lives and boost our leadership qualities. Now, if you were to write them all down, that would be quite the list, wouldn't it? So attempting them would not only be daunting, but how many of them would fall off the list or be forgotten? If we look at the high-level outcome from this long list of good habits, all paths lead back to being helpful, much like a major junction in a road system. So even our keystone habit of making good decisions, remember our, our earlier example, right? it needs other good behaviours to complement it before we can be seen as helpful. So for example, right? So someone who makes good decisions but does not encourage engagement with their team or provide effective updates to their manager is not seen as helpful. Quite the opposite, in fact, right? Although they're proficient in one area, their deficiencies elsewhere prevent them from being seen as helpful or the go-to person, right, for delivering the overall results. Be helpful as a keystone habit works because you focus on one goal that affects everything else you do. You're not spreading yourself too thin with multiple goals to achieve and losing impetus and energy. It's easy to do because all it requires is small improvements to the behaviours you already have. Right? Remember James Clear's points about successful goals? They're easy to do and you need an effective system, such as developing the Be Helpful Keystone Habit, to make them happen. Outcomes of the Be Helpful Keystone Habit. Each day that you're strengthening your Be Helpful Keystone Habit, you are encouraging people to work with you and use your products and services time and again. You're able to do so because your behaviours enable you to understand the things your clients, end users and teams need to be successful. And with this knowledge, you can build a complete and accurate picture that helps you provide the right solution to their needs. And so no matter your solution, software, services or strategy, say, People engage with it because the right solution is easy to understand and use, it fulfills a need, and it grabs their attention. So here are some examples of solutions you can deliver with the Be Helpful Keystone Habit. Achievable project plans, clear work assignments, efficient policies and procedures, effective portfolio management, trustable status updates, informative presentations, strategic relationship building, and you can foster a positive culture. Now to create an achievable project plan requires clear communication skills, written and verbal, and the ability to ask the right questions, to listen to feedback, to generate consensus, and provide presentations that are easy to understand. Now those behaviours are all part of the Be Helpful Keystone habit. You are seen as helpful because you work easily with others to create the achievable project plan. You build trust and consensus as you go because the plan accurately fulfills the needs of the project and is easy to follow and understand. Now by making small adjustments to all of these areas, the snowball effect is you can solve the problems that others can't. When you improve your leadership skills with the Be Helpful Keystone habit, you begin to solve these critical problems. So project waste and burden. Nearly 10% of a project's budget is wasted. 
only 46% of projects are mostly or always completed on budget. Unfulfilled promises. You know, almost two-thirds of projects, that's 64%, don't deliver their full benefits. And what about disengaged employees? Just over half of workers, that's 53%, are not cognitively or emotionally connected to their work and, and workplace. So those statistics come from different surveys from Project Management Institute, Wellington, and Gallup. And so for more information behind the numbers, head over to my article, Lies, Damned Lies, and Statistics. Keystone habit versus mindset. Are they the same? Well, yes, they're two sides of the same coin. Six of one, half a dozen of another. Tomato, tomato. So a keystone habit and a mindset both require you to think and act in deliberate ways. So you set yourself a goal, and your chosen actions achieve the result that you desire. So having a be helpful mindset means that you create achievable project plans that others find helpful. And to create that plan, you work to build trusting relationships. You're organized, your communications are clear, you listen to feedback and follow through on promises made. The same approach as the be helpful keystone habit. Build and use a system that works. So every system has at least three elements to it. Inputs, processing, and outputs. And the system that I use to continue my own improvements and coaching of others is no different. So let's look at inputs. So build the list of leadership skills that you want to improve and their expected results. Processing. So identify the specific behaviors that you need to improve by asking two effective problem-solving questions. Number one, how can I encourage people to insert the desired behavior that you want to improve? And then what barriers do I need to remove for this to happen? And then you follow through by developing the behaviors that fulfill the answers to those problem-solving questions. Outputs. So your specific goals are enhanced by these strategic and personal outcomes when you use the Be Helpful Keystone Habit. So the strategic outcomes are you understand what your clients, end users, and teams need to be successful. You then use that complete and accurate picture to provide the right solution. And you keep people coming back for more and engaged by ensuring that the right solution is easy to understand and use, fulfills a need, and grabs their attention. And then the personal outcome, you become your organization's unicorn employee. Take the first step by asking these two problem-solving questions. So question number one, how can I encourage people to, and then insert the desired behavior that you want to improve, and then what barriers do I need to remove for this to happen? These easy to remember questions give you the answers to help you decide how to move forward with your goal, whether that's to improve a specific leadership skill, create an achievable project plan, or generate excitement for your change initiative. With each answer, you can ask the question again in an iterative fashion. To get more details and easily understand that this, the solution you need to provide. It's the same idea as the five whys technique. So asking why, 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 and why, right, to quickly get to the root cause of a problem. So taking action on the answers to these questions leads to the behaviors that create the Be Helpful Keystone habit. Here are some examples. How can I encourage people to trust my project plan? Provide an accurate and prioritized feature list with easy to understand user stories and an achievable time frame. What barriers do I need to remove for this to happen? Simplify the data collection and the process to create the project plan. How can I encourage people to give me a feature list with accurate priorities? Well, I need to make it easy for stakeholders to provide their needs and collaborate with the sponsor, stakeholders, and project team around technical and business priorities. What barriers do I need to remove for this to happen? Well, resolve the mistrust between stakeholders, technical team, and the project manager. Improve leadership skills, a helpful recap. The two simple steps that make up the winning system, number one, develop the Be Helpful Keystone habit. Number two, define the specific behaviors that you need to improve by asking these two problem-solving questions. How can I encourage people to insert the desired behavior that you want to improve? And then what barriers do I need to remove for this to happen? 
you are seen as helpful because you understand what your clients and users and teams need to be successful. You then use that complete and accurate picture to provide the right solution. You keep people coming back for more and engaged by ensuring that the right solution is easy to understand and use, it fulfills the need and it grabs their attention. And by making small adjustments in all areas, such as relationship building, communications, organization, etc., the snowball effect is an overall improvement to the three core areas of leadership, emotional, functional, and technical.